Today we're gonna be going over some smash hit amazing fragrances that I'm gonna love forever. If at any point I work my way through an entire bottle, I'll be sure to get another one. And in some instances here, I already have. I've got backups of quite a few of these. Each one of these is kind of uh, something special in the sense that they helped keep the interest alive for me. Each time either it came out or whenever I smelled it for the first time, it just kind of reignited that spark to some extent, you know, just kept the, the interest and the excitement alive. We'll kind of talk about that as we work through each one of these here. Now, this first one is going to be one of the newest fragrances uh, just on the market right now, at least in terms of what's in this list. You know, there are a few classics in here, a few that have been out for a while. This one is new as of the past couple of years. It is CH Men Passion, and it is by far one of the best within this CH Men lineup, essentially. You know, they did uh, a major disservice to CH Men Privé by discontinuing it. I think that was a, a pretty sad move, although I guess sales-wise, clearly it wasn't working out. But man, I think that was probably one of their best releases ever. Still do think that. This one's coming in at a close second for me. It's got Iris, Sandalwood, Olibanum, a uh, nice creamy sweet iris scent with some you know mild woods in here very classy smelling scent you know this one has a not really a, a playful young juvenile smell but quite the opposite a bit more of a premium sophisticated smell this would be great for situations where you are trying to you know put on the best face possible you know you really want people to take you seriously and they've kind of had a few releases here and there that have been just okay, but this one far exceeded my expectations. You know, like I said, only been out for a couple of years now, but this one definitely reignited the, the interest that I have within the CH Men lineup, and I hope that they continue to put out some pretty good ones here and there. If nothing else, we got this one to lean back on. If you're a fan of Iris fragrances, you're probably really gonna like this. Next up, we have Hugo Boss, The Scent, Le Parfum. Love this line. The Maninka fruit is what makes these stand out, and that's what you're getting here, of course. And within this one, you're also picking up on some iris, some leather, and some woody notes. But really, the Maninka fruit, it's the star of the show, front and center. That's you know about what you would expect, and they delivered on it. That, in and of itself, makes this and all of the others within the line stand out compared to all of the other designers out there. You really don't see that note being used anywhere else. I mean, there's a few fragrances here and there that maybe have it tossed in the mix, but Hugo Boss, the scent and all of its counterparts, you know, they really kind of hone in on that. And I love it for that reason. It just, it stands out. It makes these so unique and that's great. And of course they're using iris, leather, woody notes, which are very common, especially these days, a ton of iris fragrances a ton of sweet scents, and of course leather has been a pretty popular trend as well. This one though, just has a, a nice little added touch to make it stand out above the rest. I will say this is not really what I would consider to be an iris scent, you know, like uh, Dior Homme Intense, Prada Lome, the CH Men we just talked about. I would consider those to be iris fragrances because it really is at the front and center. This one, it's prominent, but not as much. Really the star of the show is the, the classic Maninka fruit and even the leathers coming through a bit more than the iris. But regardless, it's still there offering a little bit of support. You really can't go wrong with any of these in this lineup. The Scent Lay Parfum is one I really like. To jump over to a niche fragrance up next, this one has grown on me so much. You know, first when it came out, I thought the bottle was really cool. I think it looks great. Uh, definitely a head turner and especially on the pictures and stuff online, they really make it pop and stand out. That's about all I knew about it. And then I got it in, tried it for the first time, and then I was like, yeah, you know what? I do really like this one. And the more I kind of go back to it, the more I smell it, the more I really start to like it. It is Zerzhov Groove Escape. So again, there's that bottle. It's not gonna show up good on camera, and it does show the fingerprints a little bit, especially when you're trying to look at it in all these bright lights. But trust me, in person, it looks fantastic. It's got pepper, cedarwood, incense, and myrrh. It's a really interesting blend because it kind of smells a little bit like Zerzhov Naxos, which of course I also really, really like. And there are a few affordable alternatives or clones to that one out there these days. 
it's got a little bit of that going on, but then it has this, this peppery, almost kind of slightly bubblegummy sweetness to it. It's, it's really bizarre, but in a cool way. Like I said, this one has been more of a slow burn for me. You know, it, It's taken me time, but the more I go back to it, like I said, I just love it more and I kind of get intrigued by it to some extent. It's a niche fragrance, right? It's going to have a bit of a different style, a bit of a different approach that you might not be used to if you're typically going for designers. But if you do want something to change it up a little bit, give this one a try. I really like it a lot and it has great performance too. We're going to keep this one going with Mercedes-Benz Club Black. Man, what a phenomenal designer release for around you know, $50 to $60 is typically where this one's going. And I think I've seen it into the mid 40s before for testers. And you know, the cool thing about these is they have no cap, right? So you can get a tester and it's this, right? The exact same. And if you can save, you know, I mean, any amount of money, two, three dollars or 10 or $15 by going with a tester. That's what I always do as long as, you know, no cap situation is involved. But this one is all about the vanilla and the benzoin and the ambroxan, but primarily the vanilla and of course the benzoin as well. The vanilla, it's a very syrupy, creamy, rich, like uh, vanilla syrup smell almost. And then the benzoin kind of gives off a powdery, dusty variety of vanilla and like a tonka bean in here as well. And then the ambroxan is giving it a bit of a bright sparkle off the opening. It smells great. It's one of the best designer vanillas out there, in my opinion, at least, you know, in this price range. I mean, yes, you can go up into the hundreds, you know, hundred bucks, $150, $200, and then you can start working up in a niche as well, right? And there's tons and tons of options. But as far as affordable vanilla scents goes, I mean, this is simply just one of the best. And it's not for everybody, you know, because it's vanilla heavy and it's not your usual masculine smelling scent. That's where some people get hung up on this. Vanilla typically isn't a masculine note on its own. You can combine it with things like tobacco or, or you know, a, a number of other notes to kind of start to work it into a men's fragrance, but on its own, which is primarily what it's being used like here, it's not that way. So be sure that you know what you're getting yourself into, but if you do want a vanilla focused scent for an affordable price, Mercedes-Benz Club Black is one of the best you can get, and I love this stuff. Ever since I first tried it, I was hooked, and still, it's one of my favorite options for winter. Keeping it moving with Azaro, the most wanted parfum, another favorite of mine for winter time. You know, I love Want to Buy Night. I think it's great. But this one is to me a bit more exciting. One, because it's newer and I haven't worn it as much. But two, just the opening, really. I mean, it kind of has this fizzy grape cola opening, you know, like Dunhill Icon. It's got a bit of that going on. Usually from the ginger is kind of where that's coming from. And you're getting a lot of it here. But it doesn't stay that way throughout the entirety of the scent. It does dry down to a sweeter, kind of vanillic, woody style scent, kind of putting it more in line with, you know, uh, the most wanted and things like that, which is kind of a toffee, kind of gourmand, sweet scent too. Between the two, I like the parfum better. That opening, that's what does it for me. It is addicting. And when you try this one for the first time, you're going to be hooked on it. It's really, really fun to wear. And it's yet another one that has really good performance. It's great for the cold times of the year. Kind of has a comforting smell to it. You know, just a cozy smelling scent. Love this stuff. And lately it's been popping up on discounters for a really reasonable price relative to retail and relative to what it normally goes for. I've seen it down into the 90s here lately. So it's working its way down. Um, it, it's not quite to the level of Wanted by Night, but Wanted by Night isn't too much lower than that anymore either. It's worth the money. It's a great, unique release for the cooler weather. And this next one, it's uh, you know one that I'm just gonna gloss over really quick. If I had to choose one designer fragrance to have forever, this would probably be it. It's Aqua de Joe Parfum slash Profumo. Whatever you want to call it, because they're very similar and, you know, Profumo is no longer. It's this now. It's a smoky, aquatic summer scent in a nutshell, but it has supreme versatility. You could wear it for anything in the summertime, and given that, that smokiness that it has, 
if you wanted to, I mean, you can wear this in fall and winter as well. There are many better options, but it could be an all year round signature scent. You just can't go wrong with this. Going with another niche fragrance up next, and there's a lot of niche fragrances that I really, really like a lot. I've got quite a few. My niche collection cannot even become close to rivaling my designer collection as far as quantity. The niche are outnumbered by a, a significant margin, but I do have a lot of the, the major ones. I mean, there, there's a lot of you know indie houses and, and really, really specific niche houses that I haven't even touched and probably never will. But as far as what you see typically online and videos and what people are talking about, I have them, right? And when it comes down to it, one of my favorites that still remains that I always think about for the most part and that I often really gravitate towards is Elysium by Roja Parfums. I mean, it's such a wearable but yet unique take on the modern blue fragrance. And that's what I love so much about it. You really can't say that it smells like Blue de Chanel or it smells like Sauvage or like Dylan Blue or anything like that because it doesn't. It smells like Elysium. You know, at this point, there have been a few um, releases that have cloned it or kind of modeled their DNA after it, but this came first, right? This particular smell came first. This was not the first blue fragrance ever. And could you say that maybe they've taken some inspiration from some of the others? Most likely, yes, but still, the black currant, the lemon, the bergamot, all of the fruits and citruses mixing with a very, very prominent vetiver compound sets this one apart from the crowd. You know, the main thing, of course, is going to be the cost. It's very cost prohibitive. And again, there are clones now that you can get into, and you could get this into your collection for $35, $40, right? But for me, you know, just the OG, it's always going to be one that I'll love and wear and, and just have forever. Okay, Dolce & Gabbana, the one Eau de Parfum is up next. I mean, this goes way, way back to the beginnings of my collection, for the most part, you know, very, very early on. And still, to me, is just one of the best smells created, you know. You can have your thoughts on, you know, the, the performance, which that's, you know, not only a thought, but it's either it performs good on you or it doesn't. You really can't change it, right? You can you can have your your issues with that. You know, you can say that it's it's uh, played out and it's been worn too much by too many people and it's no good anymore, right? And there's there's all these thoughts and you know kind of negatives that you can conjure up related to the cologne side of things, like putting it on your skin and wearing it to smell good to people. But the way I look at this one is the actual smell, you know, aside of it being a cologne that I would use to try to smell good, right? I just, I pick this one up and I just smell it and I enjoy it so much. You know, it's such a good tobacco and amber scent that really I don't care about all the other stuff. The performance isn't good. Oh, well, everybody has worn it. Oh, well, I can enjoy this one just on my own for what it is. And that's all that matters to me. Last up for this video, we have Dior Ohm Cologne. As if I didn't need any more of this. I picked up this um, giant 200 ml a couple years ago. Um, you can see it's a little bit different the, how they've got it lettered down here. It used to be kind of a more serious looking font down here for Dior Ohm Cologne. I've got three bottles of it. I've got two 200 ml and then one... 125, I believe it is. 125 was the one that I got first. Still have it, of course, and that's gonna have the biggest dent missing in it. It's typically what I wear from. These 200s, I just ended up getting for a good deal and I can't ever have enough of it. And realistically, you know, you can go through this stuff. I mean, if you're wearing it consistently in the summertime, chances are you're gonna be applying it heavily and you can just watch that level go down. I mean, it, it you know, these atomizers, they work pretty well. So if you do, you know, 10 of those every time you wear it every day. I mean, you're going to start to put a dent in it pretty quickly. But I love this stuff. I mean, it is just one of the most refreshing, cooling summer fragrances that I've ever tried. It's got bergamot, grapefruit blossom, and musk. That's all the notes that they give you, and really that's about all you need to know about anyway. A bright, refreshing, clean, musky, just crisp smelling scent. And at this point as well, there have been a few clones, right? So you can get this for a more affordable price and all of that. But this was the first of its kind and it smells breathtaking, especially in the heat. 
beautiful stuff. All right, you guys, that's gonna do it for me. Some fantastic fragrances that I think are just 10 out of 10 amazing that I will love and talk about for years. I will link all of them down below, but that's gonna do it for me. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy. We'll see you tomorrow with another one. Take care.